What they had done is they had embalmed this Pope so his body would survive throughout the ages and coated it in gold. And what the people were doing was coming up and praying to this dead body. A'udhu Billah, they were praying to a dead body. And I'm looking at, I'm thinking, this is supposed to be a place which is the home of my religion, yet I feel so uncomfortable. What are these people doing? How can you be praying to a dead body? Then I'd say there was a statue once you get past that, and people were rubbing the feet of this statue. And they'd say, when you rub the feet, you make a wish. I'm thinking, ah, cheap. This is idol worship at the supposed home of my faith. You go on a little bit further and you see, A'udhu Billah, there's a place within the Vatican called the Sistine Chapel. I'm sure many of you would have seen pictures of it. They call it like the pinnacle of Renaissance art. Within there, what it is, is you look up at the roof and there's a massive uh, painting of all of the stages of creation. And the centerpiece of this is a picture of God himself and Adam alayhi salam. Now I studied at least enough to know the Ten Commandments. The second of which is you should not make pictures, you should not make images of your Lord. Yet in the, in the Sistine Chapel within the Vatican we see a picture of God. And all he is is an old man with a long grey beard. Is this who you're worshipping? You're told not to make images of your God. And now you're going and doing such things? Again, this is idol worship. And I felt in my heart that this, it's not right. Even though I've grown up being told this is what I'm supposed to believe, I reject it. So around that same time, I called myself a non-denominational Christian. I was someone who believed in God and you know, I didn't follow any certain church. So I felt really disassociated from all Christians. And it was around this time that I started to read about other religions, not out of interest, you know, uh, that I was searching for something that I needed. I was just interested in reading. So I read about Hinduism, about Buddhism, about this religion, Shintoism, Zoroastrianism, but I never looked into Islam. It was only after some time that I met a Muslim friend of mine, and SubhanAllah, look at how much he loved Islam. He said, nice to meet you. My name is so-and-so. Would you like to become Muslim? MashaAllah. How many of us have started a conversation like that? Now, I assume very uh, little of the time someone would actually say, yes, I'd love to. But Alhamdulillah, it opened the doors to da'wah. I knew this guy's a Muslim. If I want to know about Islam, I'll ask a question to him. And so I would. And he'd always be telling me about Islam. And one time I remember he actually gave me a book. It was a very big book. I can't remember what it was. But for all I knew, it was the Quran. And I used to keep it in my room, even though I'd never read it. And one day my brother actually found it and he said, what's this? It must be the Quran. So he took it outside and him and his friends, they burnt it. A'udhu Billah. This is the hatred that people had for Islam. So even though I knew nothing about it, you'd understand I wouldn't want to join this religion because look at how much the people hate it. Who'd want to join something like that so therefore your family will turn against you, therefore your friends will turn against you? So of course I had no doubt in my mind, you know, I'm happy where I am. But uh, after some time again I had another Muslim friend and subhanAllah, because of his ignorance, he came from one of the countries which used to be a communist state. So then they'd been robbed of their Islam by their leaders. And he, out of his ignorance, started abusing Jesus, peace be upon him. He instantly assumed you know, our prophet is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and your prophet is Jesus alayhi wa sallam. So he began to attack him. And I was very upset at this. So I thought, man, I'm going to go home, I'm going to do my research, and I'm going to find out about his religion, and I'm going to attack him. So ultimately, I wanted to look into Islam so that I could discredit it. And subhanAllah, the first thing that I found when I began to look into Islam was that Muslims believe in Jesus, peace be upon him. And this is quite a shock. Like I thought, hold on. The thing that I'm looking for is the fact that they don't believe in Jesus, yet this is saying that they do believe in Jesus. So I thought, maybe it's a mistake. So I went, I checked that. It says, yes, they believe in Jesus. They believe in Moses. They believe in all of the prophets that I did. And I thought, well... And I've been on this earth for about what, 15, 16, 17 years and I've never heard this before. So man, I wanted to find out more. And the main thing which I was happy, the, like the second thing I found out about Islam was that Muslims believe in one God and they did not compromise on that. They believed in Tawheed and they would not budge. They didn't say any of the prophets were part of God. They did not say that God could become a man. They did not say any such thing. And every single religion you will see makes this type of shirk. You will see within Judaism, who claim to be monotheistic, they say, Hanefesh Hayahud, Nefesh Elohim, which means the soul of the Jewish man or woman is the soul of God. They believe that God's soul belongs in them. 
They believe they are the chosen people. You look within Mormonism. What do the Mormons believe? These people have got a message they think is so great they must come and knock on your door every Sunday morning to wake you up and bother you. They believe that humans actually become gods. If you're good, you become gods. So they believe the god that they worship at this time used to be a man who used to worship a god who used to be a man. Look at this. How can any sane person believe such a thing? Every religion made shirk somewhere except Islam. And I knew this from the very start. So alhamdulillah, I began to read more and more about Islam. And like I'd really want to be very sure about this religion. So I read and I read and I read and I read and I read. Even my Muslim friends would come up to me asking for fatwas. They'd say, Musa, are we allowed to do so and so as Muslims? And I'd say, yeah, yeah, in Sahih Bukhari it says this and that. You know, Subhanallah. So I really wanted to be sure I wanted to do justice. Because I didn't want to, you know, jump into a religion only to find something later on that I would reject. So after some time, someone came to me and they gave me a videotape, which was by Brother Abdurrahim Green, about how he embraced Islam. And looking through this, as soon as I'd watched it, I said, man, I agree with everything he's saying. And I can no longer call myself a Christian. Really, the beliefs of the Christians are far too corrupt. So I was like neutral. I wasn't yet Muslim, but I wasn't Christian, alhamdulillah. I was in the middle. And at this time, I began to incorporate the acts of the Muslim worship into my own worship. So when I'd pray, I'd make sajda. Because I'd, I'd been in a mosque. I'd seen how the Muslims had prayed. Uh, and I even said, when the month of Ramadan was coming, that I was going to fast for Ramadan. And subhanAllah, I came to my Muslim friends and I said, are you going to fast for Ramadan? And most of them said no. And I said, me, I'm a non-Muslim and I'm going to fast for the whole month of Ramadan. SubhanAllah. And so they all said, okay, we too shall fast inshallah. And it was during that month that I went to a friend of my house and we used to always break fast there because mashallah, the Muslims always seem to have the nicest food. So food's also a form of da'wah. And uh, subhanAllah, I, he had a massive library of books and I began to read through one which was about the miracles of the Qur'an. And as soon as I had started reading this, like I was glued, I could not stop reading it. And by the time I had finished, like I, what I knew about Islam was the halal, the haram, this and that, the stories of the prophets. But reading about this, this was showing, Allah is saying, this book that I have could be from nobody but Allah. And as soon as I had finished reading it, Alhamdulillah, I said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah. And Alhamdulillah, that's basically my story of how I embraced Islam. Uh, so here I'll end, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika, ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.